The new idea in this lecture is the relation between force and potential energy. Specifically, the force is equal to the negative of the derivative of the potential energy. Let's look at some examples to see how this works. Consider a ball being dropped to the ground. The ball starts out with a speed of zero. As it falls, its gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. In terms of forces, there is a constant downward force on the ball from the gravity of the Earth. That constant force accelerates the ball downward and the ball travels faster and faster. Eventually it hits the ground and during the impact, the ground exerts a very large upward force on the ball that sends it shooting upward. During this whole process, however, the force of gravity is constant. If we plot the gravitational potential energy, we see that the potential has a constant slope, which means a constant derivative, so our formula tells us that the force is indeed constant. The minus sign tells us that the force is in the direction that decreases the potential energy, which in this case is downward or towards decreasing the height, y. Now let's look at the forces on a mass attached to a spring. When the mass is bouncing up and down, then the spring potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy and then back to potential energy again. When the mass is at its maximum, the potential energy is also at its largest value and the kinetic energy is zero. On the plot of spring potential energy, we see that at these points, the potential energy has a large slope, so the mass feels a large force from the spring, pushing it towards the equilibrium position, and the mass accelerates. When the mass reaches the equilibrium position, the kinetic energy is at a maximum and the potential energy is at a minimum. On the plot, we see that because the potential energy is at a minimum, its derivative is zero, and there is no force on the mass. In the case of spring potential energy, we see that the slope changes as the mass moves, which means that the force changes with the position of the mass. If you remember your calculus, you know that the derivative of x squared is 2 times x, so the derivative of the spring potential is just a linear function of x, and it changes sign when the position moves through the equilibrium position. We can apply this relation between potential energies and forces to any potential energy that depends on position. Suppose we had a complicated potential energy, as shown in this plot, that depends on the distance between two atoms in a molecule Again, the magnitude of the force is proportional to the slope of the potential energy. If the atom is at a point where the slope is large, then there is a large force on the atom, which will make the atom speed up or slow down. If the atom is at a point where the slope is small, then there is a small force on the atom. In upcoming lectures, we will be using the relation between potential energies and forces to understand how the forces between atoms relate to thermal and bond energies.